Andrea Baldi and Mr. Dave Stahl, who knows more about motorized transportation than any man in the United States, so you two uh, will have a lot to talk about. But uh, we were just talking off air. I, I get that everybody, you have all the performance spec numbers and everybody, but to me, when I look at that, that's not a car, that's a piece of art, priceless art almost. You know, when we create a new car, we always have a clear statement to our designer, we need to have a wow effect. It shouldn't be all about the functionality. Yeah, it's you've been wowing also. people for decades now and generations. Uh, so how important is California to your overall marketing plan? It's very important because 23% of sales in America are in, happening in California. So obviously, also San Diego is an important hub. We just inaugurated yesterday a new showroom in La Yola. And, uh, and then we have a lot of customers uh, that try to you know, find this, their lifestyle very consistent with Lamborghini in this part of the world. Well, and the, and the weather here fits the car perfectly. Right. Yeah. It's 365 almost days out of the year. But I mean, is that, can that if, you, if you bought it in Chicago, say, could you take that out in the winter? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there is a Huerus uh, traditional model here, 2022, that has also a snow uh, driving mode. In this case, we have a car that is uh, more extreme, performance the stance uh, for performance uh, and uh, uh, for uh, a car that can really give the best uh, uh, in, in a surface that is more gravel or off-road and we change the suspension from air suspension adjustable that will be better in, uh, in winter with suspension that are steel and so they're more direct uh, and stiff. And, I, it, and it just broke the, the record for Pike's Peak correct. which well, is that so race it uphill. It can go uphill. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, where would you tell, I mean like to, to, to experience this car the way it's... You go to a racetrack, you go to a you, club you, you, track. Like you can't go out in the... No, 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 no. There's nowhere you can go. Well, there's thermal, well, there's thermal, thermal yeah, there's plenty of places. There's Thermal yeah. Raceway, there's Auto Club Speedway. There's lots of places that you could go that they actually will rent out the parking lot. But for the true driving experience, you need to go to a, an actual track. And, and then you I, have to put the fenders at risk. And well, <laughs> you know what, though? This car is so intuitive whether you're a good driver, medium driver, or maybe even kind of a bad driver. I mean, I went out to Thermal a couple of times with these folks, thank you very much for the invite, and it was the time of my life, and it really tells you what this car can do. And, and I want to get to that question in a second, but first, I'm sure you're, as you're probably aware in your sleep more so than me, the, the push is towards EV. Everything's EV, this is a gas combustion, you know, mm -hmm. gas engine. Internal combustion engine, yeah. pure. So Turbo. I mean, is that your? Is this the last one that there's going to be, or are, are, are you guys going to acquiesce to the EV hysteria? So we have a clear strategy uh, for uh, towards electrification that uh, we'll have an internal combustion engine associated to an electric engine. So we are hybridizing the entire product range by 2025, and we are investing 1.8 billion uh, only in this process because it's a big change. But at the moment, we are celebrating the internal combustion engine, uh, the end of the internal combustion engine pure. Well, and or is it really the end? Because if you sell out, people still like it the way it is. I think that, you know, that clearly the regulations everywhere in the world, it's in California and in Europe, uh, is pushing uh, by 2035 uh, to get rid of any pollution, uh, any environmental impactful uh, car. But this doesn't mean necessarily that you have to give up uh, an internal combustion engine because it's about emission and it shouldn't be about uh, losing the mechanical complexity of an internal combustion engine. So maybe uh, synthetic fuels could be the answer. 13 years from now, things will be very different. We know, uh, if you look at 13 years before. So if you ask us what is the next generation of Lamborghini, we still don't know exactly what will be that powertrain that will be the perfect fit for Automobile Lamborghini in 2035. Now to pick up on where Dave was talking about, about the ability to drive the car right. even remotely in, in its performance zone. Oh, yeah. I walk in and you have to be concerned. If a Formula One driver walks in, then you have no worries. But how many well, I people, don't know. That may not uh, be true either. How Formula many one. people are really <laughs> equipped to experience this vehicle the way it was designed walking off the street? If I, I mean, if I walk in and laid the money down, you're going to sell me the car, but am I capable of driving it? You know, what you will be absolutely surprised them, but is in fact uh, something that every customer can appreciate, that these cars are extremely easy. Uh, they support you and uh, uh, be driven at a very uh, high speed, even if you go to a racetrack. But obviously, if you want to bring it to the limit, uh, uh, what we organize are also uh, training, uh, and we go to the racetrack with instructors, that, yeah. and that is really the only way to really appreciate the full potential. 
But on the road, uh, these cars, you drive it Beautiful. like any other. And it's extremely simple yeah. and intuitive. Yeah, and but it, you could take it to the grocery store. Oh, yeah. yeah absolutely. Oh, it's yeah. a daily car. It drives like a normal car until you decide you want to push it to its limits, which you and I will probably never, ever see. Yeah. Well, if we saw it, we'd see it once. Uh, what's the top speed? So, under the 90 miles per hour for the Urus Performante. <laughs> Well, you can get to 7 Eleven at 198 SUV, miles right? an hour. Hey, I'm a two time graduate of the Bob Bobner class, so okay, I, I, me probably, too. I, I probably could take it. I think we could. Uh, just quickly, can I ask some dumb questions? Like insurance. Right. Uh, obviously, you have to. Uh, what's the. There, no one buys these cars on the, on the Never Never plan where they put 20% down. Everyone who comes in lays down the cash, right? They buy them out whole. But in, in California, it will be a, a lot about leasing, <laughs> as you can imagine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let, let me say, uh, our con uh, customers are um, entrepreneurs, CEOs, uh, people that uh, want to get the best that is available. So they are not concerned about the price, they are concerned about the value. And so if mm. the value uh, reflects what they are spending, they are very happy with that whether it is for insurance or to right. extend a warranty or to buy the value of the car. So, B Believe it or not, it's still a business decision when Absolutely. they buy this car. It is. But at least you buy this car, it, it, might, it has a prospect of going up in value. Well, it does go yeah, up. It does. Yeah. At the moment, a pre-owned car is way more expensive right. than a new car because you don't right. have to wait one year and a half to right. get it, right? So, And they're all well taken care of. That's the beauty of it. Yes. Um, after say it's a big Thank part. you for sharing this with us. I mean, it's this is not something we see very often. So for the fact that you make time to bring the car our way, and it is, we're very greatly appreciative. Uh, it was my pleasure, and thank you for having me. 